So I thought you could maybe say something more about Jana. I've got some um, a section of Majima 39 where it talks about Jana. So it's part of the um, what they call the uh, Anu 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 Gamma. The called the um, gradual training yeah, yeah, yeah. and the Um <clears throat> so it's after the hindrances after ha having abandoned these five hindrances defilements of the mind that weaken understanding quite secluded from sense desires secluded from unwholesome things mm. with thinking with pondering he dwells having attained the first jhana, a joy and pleasure born of seclusion. He drenches, steeps, fills, pervades this very body mm. with the joy and pleasure born of seclusion, so that there isn't any part of the entire body that is unpervaded by the joy and pleasure born of seclusion. Imagine bhikkhus, a skilled barber or a barber's apprentice, who, having scattered soap powder onto a dish, would sprinkle it bit by bit with water, so that this lump of soap powder goes moist, mm. becomes moist, inside and out, pervaded with moisture and not dripping. In just this way, bhikkhus, the bhikkhu drenches, steeps. <coughs> so not too much, not too little. Mm. Yeah, just the right amount. Um, see, that's another thing that... Uh, people would often like read over that passage and thinking oh, I must uh, when I get jhana I get the pleasure of jhana and then I focus on that pleasure and I and I sort of pervade my body with that pleasure but even even those uh, <coughs> even those passages says uh, that uh, the pleasure comes from the uh, being secluded Seclusion, yeah. from unwholesome it, it occurs to me that actually you, en you dwell because you entered it you dwell in jhana because you entered it yeah. Accompanied, so with simultaneous pleasure present, which is a resu like direct result of seclusion, not direct result of the jhana. Could you say that? Could you say that the first jhana is that pleasure, that joy and pleasure from of seclusion? No, that's the point. Okay. Jhana is not that. Okay. Jhana, jhana is the clarity of the mind that has surmounted and experienced pleasure on account of surmounting. So if anything, that pleasure mm -hmm. will come before the jhana. Uh -huh. Steadying your mind in that pleasure, because you recognize it's a wholesome pleasure. Pleasure, basically, it's a symptom. That pleasure is a good symptom of you healing from sensuality yeah. and unwholesome states and the uh, the pressure of the hindrances. But having gone beyond them by understanding them. Sorry. But, but having gone beyond, having gone yes. beyond them by yeah, understanding. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you understand the extent of it. You understand that the, the relief uh, that arises as a result of it. And that's how you dwell in the jhana, mm -hmm. which is why jhanas are wholesome and often are kind of given as a way of fortifying your understanding of the dharma, clarity of mindfulness. <coughs> that's what every jhana is, is is held by: complete purity of mind, recollectiveness, like like in unshakable, yeah. imperturbable context. Yeah. So pervading your body with this pleasure. Well, first of all, you need to get that pleasure. And you don't get it by attending to your jhana. Mm -hmm. You get it by understanding the extent of sensuality and the five hindrances and surmounting that extent. Mm -hmm. So it's an indirect thing, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You don't get pleasure by focusing on sensation in the body. You get pleasure by understanding um, what is the nature of the hindrances and me being subjected to it. What is the extent of it? Mm -hmm. What is the necessary basis for hindrances? Mm -hmm. And maintain the clarity of that context in your mind. Uh, you get the pleasure uh, as a result of the relief. By realizing that yeah. you've stepped outside of it. Exactly. So then you get to pervade your body with that pleasure that has arisen on its own, not by now I'll take this pleasure and pervade it. Yeah. Because that would be like, again, going back to taking things up in the same sense you <coughs> were taking hindrances up. Yeah. You pervade it by protecting the same context because of which this pleasure resulted. Mm -hmm. So maintaining the clarity of the domain, uh, recollectedness, and uh, the extent of the body, That's how being clear right. about the extent of the body. Oh, this is how big. And as 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 the clearer you become about the extent of the body, 
head to toe, the clearer it gets pervaded by the pleasure. Yeah. But you're not taking the pleasure and sort of smearing it all over yourself. No, I'll move it down to my shoulders. Exactly. Now I'll exactly. Move it down yeah. To, yeah, yeah. There is no I am doing this, I'm doing that yeah, in the jhana yeah. because it's it's set up properly, and then this has this establishment is the result of it. Could you say you pervade the <coughs> body with this joy and ble- pleasure mm. that comes from seclusion, seclusion, from being secluded, mm. understanding that you are secluded. Mm. You pervade the body with that by becoming clearer and clearer about the phenomenon of body. Yes, by providing the body for it to be pervaded by. Yeah, by providing the body. Okay, yeah, yeah. And you provide the body by practicing clarity of the extent of the body. And that's why, by the way, you go with, uh, above the hindrances, because mm-hmm. they're entirely within the body, they're entirely bodily. But you not being developed uh, re- in regard to the extent of the body, you get affected and pressured and burdened and subjected to these hindrances that are entirely bodily. Mm-hmm. Entirely bound up with the body and cannot occur anywhere else except within the body. That's why you know you can be sleepy, but it's not necessarily a hindrance. But even even uh, when you're like really really tired and sleepy, it can be a hindrance mm-hmm. because it really it's not determined by what's in your body in a sense of whether it's sleepy or excited or something. It's determined how much the mind is above it or not. Yeah. So you pervade this body by pleasure. The pleasure has arisen on its own as a result of withdrawal. So now you want to pervade the body by discerning the body even more yes. for what it is. And then the same pleasure will keep arising to that extent. So you've That's why not too much, not too little. Because you can only discern the extent of the body to the extent that it is. Mm-hmm. So not discerning the extent of the body correctly means either overdoing it or underdoing it. Making it too wet or too dry. Yeah. So you've overcome the hindrances by being clear about the the basis for the hindrances. Yes. Yeah. Which is the body. Yeah. But not being clear in a <coughs> sense of uh, figure it out. No, no, more no. like see it as a necessarily yeah. present thing right here, right now. Whether you're clear about it or not. Which is that, that what is the we basis spoke of the before, that peripheral uh, notion of recognition of your body here enduring yeah. as a necessary basis for excitement, for ill will, for... Yes. Uh, drowsiness, for yeah. worry, for doubt. People who think doubt is mental, it is when it's a hindrance. Otherwise, it's just, like, why would you then f- literally perceive it as a, as a kind of bodily discomfort mm-hmm. when you're in, in doubt? Mm-hmm. It, it's also body. It's on the level of the, of the domain of the, of the senses and the body. Because mm-hmm. doubt can only be about the content <coughs> of things. Yeah. It cannot be about the nature. And content yeah. of things, it's already within the uh, layer of the body. You're basically, with doubt, you're always looking for Some, sight, something with another past sound, the senses. Another, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. past the senses, some yeah. other thing in the world. Yeah. So having abandoned the five hindrances, having abandoned uh, desire towards the world, any concern regarding the world, so having discerned the body to the um, necessary extent as a basis for the entire world. Yeah. My world, their world, anything in between. It has to be within the basis of this body. And now you just maintain that context. When the clarity of your seclusion becomes like, developed, uh, you will experience relief because you will feel safe because you're verifying factual safety from concern, from centrality, from the hindrances. Mm-hmm. But even then, as I said, you, don't, you can't take that pleasure because you haven't created it. Mm-hmm. So you pervade your body. How? Well, by the same manner, you how you pervade it in the first place. Mm-hmm. By providing the clarity of the extent, pleasure affects it. Yeah. So you pervade it by fully clarifying that extent further and further, or simply by repeating it. Yeah. You will keep pervading it. Yeah. And by the way, it's the same like in the in the third or the fourth jhana. I think it's the fourth jhana described as a covered with a white cloth. Yeah, yeah. Like to the last, so basically from the highest tip of your head to the toe. Yeah. There is not a bit of the body that's not covered, that something else is included or the body hasn't been included enough. Yeah. So that's like when you outline the extent of the body as a clear context in your mind to, to such clarity and refinement, such as imagine if you're completely wrapped in the white cloth, just to the extent that your outlines of your body are. And that's how that pleasure is felt. 
of that um, of that equanimity mm -hmm. in the fourth jhana. Hence the simile. Yuri, come here. No. Yeah, I thought we could go through the similes, the, the other jhanas and similes. Yeah, you can read them out. So, um, <coughs> so furthermore, bhikkhus, with the calming of thinking and pondering, with internal clarity, you might say peripheral mm. clarity. Yeah, clarity of the context or the extent. Have a unified mind. But with a unified mind, without thinking, without pondering, the bhikkhu dwells having attained the second jhana. A joy and pleasure born of composure. Mm. So now it's not a joy and pleasure of seclusion, but of composure, samadhi. And again, he drenches, steeps, fills, pervades this very body with the joy and pleasure born of composure, so that there isn't any part of the this unpervaded by the joy and happiness born of composure. Imagine a lake of spring water for which there were no inflow from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, and the sky would from time to time replenish it. Then a cool stream of water, having welled up in the lake, would drench, steep, fill, pervade that lake with cool water, so that there isn't any part of the lake that isn't is unpervaded mm. by cool yeah. water. To the extent that the lake is, yeah. to that extent it's filled with water. Mm. So that's what I mean, because you're not doing it on your own terms. You're not feeling it as much as you want, or as much as you desire, mm -hmm. or as much as you think you should. You, it get, it's getting filled to the extent that you discern that it can be filled. Yes, yeah. So it's like the, the lake determines how far that cold water exactly. can go. Exactly. Not you. Exactly, not you. Not you. But so yeah. only by being clear about only by being clear about what the body is, the extent of yeah. the body, can you be clear about the extent of joy the joy and pleasure. Exactly. It's it's defined by the extent of the body, not by and that's why there is no craving in jhana. It's impossible to crave for the pleasure yeah. of jhana. Yeah. If you are doing it, that is already rooted in craving. Yeah, yeah. I want it here, I don't want it yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's rooted on the level of preference. Yeah. And then there's the fading away of the joy. A bhikkhu dwells indifferent, recollected, and aware. Mm. So you were saying how it's all based on recollectedness. Now it's like, it's almost like the recollectedness, the yeah, samad, the, well, the, the recollectedness is becoming more and more, more composed. And more, more, yeah, more and more. Stronger, prominent, and clearer, and yeah, exactly. More standing out. So, and so, so he dwells indifferent, recollected, aware. He experiences a pleasure with the body he dwells having attained the third jhana, which the noble ones describe as dwelling with pleasure, indifference, recollectiveness. Hmm. Pleasure with the body, indifference with the mind. Uh -huh. Pleasure, indifference, hmm. recollectiveness. He drenches, steeps, fills, pervades this very body with the pleasure free from joy, so that there isn't any part of the body that's unpervaded by that. Uh, he says, imagine a pond of lilies or lotuses, some were born in the water, sorry, some lilies and lotuses that were born in the water have grown up submerged in the water without rising out of it, so that cool water drenches, steeps, fills, pervades their tips and roots, mm. so that there isn't any part of the entire lily or lotus that is unpervaded with cool water. And again, just the kind of idea of tip, tip to the root from head to toe. Yeah, yeah. The body is like the lotus that's fully immersed in the water. Completely. There is nothing that hasn't been um, um, permeated mm -hmm. by the water. And then last one, having abandoned pleasure, having abandoned pain, with the previous disappearance of uh, happiness and unhappiness, mm. a bhikkhu dwells having attained fourth jhana. Ne neither pleasure nor pain 
clarified by the indifference of recollectedness. Mm. So now the body is neither pleasant nor unpleasant. Yeah. It's just a neutral yeah. state with indifference of the composure. Yeah. But it that neither, well, nothing's felt to the extent of the body. Exactly to the extent of the body. There's nothing felt there. Neither pleasure nor um, displeasure is felt. But is that it, wouldn't you say that the neither pleasure nor pain is a feeling? Yeah, but it's it's not felt. It's okay, okay. That's, that's what it is. That's why if you know neither pleasure nor, <coughs> nor pleasure, it's you pleasant. Know what, you know what not feeling is. Exactly. If you don't know what neither pleasure nor displeasure is, you are affected by it. Mm -hmm. If you don't know it, which means it's felt unpleasantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even in case of an Arahant, it's not that they discover some s super extra dimension in between the feelings, so they don't feel. No, it's it's either pleasure, displeasure, or neutral feeling, which is for them all neutral. So they don't feel any of it. And because they know it, that's why it's pleasant. Mm -hmm. That's what Sariputta meant. Yeah, the fact there's nothing felt, that's why it's pleasant. Mm -hmm. So on one level, it's nothing felt, on another level, that is pleasure. Mm -hmm. But it's a different type of pleasure. Mm -hmm. So four jhana, it's exactly that. Like if you were to to um, to develop the four jhana, it would be impossible to not be an arahant. Because four jhana is not about random, <laughs> magical, pleasurable attainment. Mm. You see the amount of clarity there, to the clarity about the, the domain of the hindrances, yeah. clarity about the extent of the body, clarity about the nature of the feeling, clarity about the unshakable imperturbable context of mindfulness, whatever you want to translate it. Yeah. Yeah. Being Complete equanimity will have to be the result of being it. Being skilled in basically yeah, not not feeling or like like that being being unmoved by pleasant feeling or yeah. not pleasant feeling. Yeah, not as a matter of choice but as a matter of development. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to be moved, it would be impossible to move. Mm -hmm. It's just impossible. And then, yeah, that's the simile that you... The white you've cloth. You've said the white cloth. Yeah. So exactly he's, he's to the extent. He's, he's, it's funny, he says he's sitting down. He's sitting down, having pervaded this very body with a purified, clarified mind, so that there isn't any part of the body. So he's not... The pervading isn't with a pleasure or joy or anything. There. No, no, no. It's, it's pervading with a purified, clarified mind. Mm. Imagine because a man was sitting, have, having uh, sitting down, having covered himself from the head with a white cloth, so that there wasn't any parts of his body unpervaded by the white cloth. In just this way, because the bhikkhu was sitting down, having pervaded this mm. very body with a purified, clarified mind, so that yes. there isn't any part of the body that is unpervaded. The purified exactly. mind. So, so I, I, in in that case, you're not anymore. Um, or in other, it's still the same. The extent of the body gets pervaded by the clarity of the mind. Yeah. Which is now that perfect equanimity. So you're pervading the extent of the body, from the tip of the head, to the to the to, to the feet, uh, by the that pleasurable equanimity, mm -hmm. pleasurable indifference, so to speak, mm -hmm. of the of the uh, of the completely unpolluted, fully developed uh, composure. Recollectiveness of that context. That kind of, what has started indirectly, so to speak, you know, when you're pulled by hindrances, you need to keep like discerning the background of the necessary basis for the hindrances, mm -hmm. and then you get to approve them. Well, now, going back to the level where the hindrances are, that's now indirect. Because mm -hmm. the mind got so established upon that peripheral, as the necessary basis, as the, like, really what's first and that order cannot be perverted now mm -hmm. so that's what i mean if somebody can develop the mind to the extent of the fourth jhana it's virtually impossible to not be an arahant then because there will be nothing left they will not be included in the clarity of the right order right context in better mindfulness um, so all, all any all and any basis of passion aversion and distraction are completely Evaporated. Mm. 
But even without going all the way to four jhana, it's the same principle, and it's useful, I think, for people because you know everybody likes the idea of jhanas. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you want to understand that the pleasure has nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you have a pleasure of your meditation, and if you can attend to it directly, that's not the pleasure of jhana. Mm. It's the pleasure of some novelty of some sort of release or whatever you've been doing. Which is what everyone's going to experience exactly. when they first start exactly. meditation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Once you start calming down, you're going to have, like, as I said, like a novelty. Wow. Yeah. Um, but the fact that, see, you, you can relate to it directly mm-hmm. means it's not the result of your withdrawal from anything you can de- relate to directly. So the pleasure of the jhana is, for, first of all, it's not pleasure of jhana, it's pleasure of withdrawal. So if you have absolutely no idea what seclusion from centrality and five hindrances is, you can be safe then to, to assume that whatever pleasure you feel in your meditation is not the pleasure you should be pursuing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it comes, fine. If it goes, it's fine. But don't think there's anything special about it. Yeah. Don't think it has it's about cultivating that. That exa- should be your job. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. Like, you're, it's not even about cultivating the, the wholesome pleasure of the withdrawal. You're yes. just using it as a symptom to like pervade that withdrawal further and further and yeah. further. So actually, really, it's funny talking about now. The body seems to be like key here. I, I well, it always is. Exactly. With all the with the jhana, so that's why it's you know you're touching with the body. The witness, yeah. yeah the touching, body. touching these attainments yeah. with the body. Yeah. Um, the Developing body your mind in regard to the extent of the body. Yeah. And it's actually that's exactly the reason why even an Arya is not an anagami yet. He's he is not developed uh, to the um, how did the sutta put it. Um, his mind is not developed in regard to the body, I think. That's how it's said. He, or he hasn't sense. been developed in the body. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, that's why sensuality still arises for him. Mm-hmm. There are two types. He hasn't been developed to the, uh, in regard to the body and hasn't been developed in regard to the mind. So he still have, has work to do. Mm-hmm. If you have been developed in regard to the extent of your own body, regardless of the occasion, you have basically developed in regard to the extent of the hindrances, which means you cannot be hindered by them. Because mm. what they hinder, you're outside of it now, as in you have surmounted it. By not surmounting it, their hindering hinders you. You get hindered by it. Some of the hindrances are also fetters, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, but that's a different though. I was thinking if... You're constantly hindered by something then you end up developing a view over it, and that's when it's a fetter, like mm-hmm. fetter of doubt. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. But you can free yourself from a fetter of doubt, as in understand the nature of doubt, but still be affected by doubt on a bodily level, in yeah, terms of so. uh, basically feeling, craving in regard to the unple- unpleasant feeling of doubting something. That is the hindrance of doubt. But if you've developed jhana... Oh, even that cannot touch you. Yeah. That's why Arahant is the destroyer of the hindrances. Whether he's in jhana or not, those things cannot hinder him anymore because his mind has developed above. Even at its lowest level, it's still above. Even at its uh, least composed level, least recollected level, it's still above the five hindrances. Mm-hmm. Which is exactly what, what makes you an mm-hmm. Like when these fetters fall off, they cannot reappear. It means you can't go below that. So, peripheral awareness of the body mm. is the starting point of the body that's enduring while you're talking, sitting, being silent, eating, going to the toilet. The image of the body that is there is your starting point. Well, actually, no, starting point is sense restraint. Yeah. <coughs> but the image of the body, <coughs> and you're sort of getting at that via the hindrances? At the beginning? In a way, yeah. yeah. Having to endure hindrances as well. And then this sort of indirect pleasure that comes as a sort of, as you realize you're free from that, that then becomes the the way. Yeah, well, not just you're free from that, but you, you realize that by, by, say, by establishing, by recollecting the extent of the body correctly and then maintaining that recollectedness, um, 
you immediately imply not just freedom from these hindrances, but freedom from the future hindrances. Yeah. So the whole domain, the possible things that could happen, none of it can apply, and that is felt. That's why it's such a tremendous relief. Mm. So something you need to uh, like fabricate. You just need to maintain the context. The re relief will have to come up with. So then you can know. Yes, you can't have a. You can have a relief without the jhana. Um, and uh, you can't have a jhana without a relief. Mm -hmm. But that's not because jhana is the relief. Jhana mm -hmm. is after the relief. So you get the relief, you get the pleasure, then you still keep doing the same thing, maintaining the same context, until you kind of become established upon it, so to speak, where it's not flimsy, where it doesn't go away as soon as you sort of, something pops up. That's why Buddha said, steady your mind in this yeah. practice. Steady your mind in the theme of jhana. So you can do that even before jhana. And otherwise he dwells. Yeah. He dwells Once you steady your mind, then you actually dwell in yeah. that steadied mind of, of, of the relief from everything unwholesome and concerns about the world. That's and that's what jhana is. That's, that's why you dwell in it. Viharati could just be he lives. Living. He lives. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Yeah. 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 He lives in that state. Mm. And when I say state, I mean that establishment, not like some sort of oblivious oblivion. No, no, no. He lives with yeah, that, as the Buddha says, whether he walks, talks, goes to the toilet, eats, yeah. he's in, he, uh, whatever he does is divine because he's in jhana. Yeah. So, practicing the recollectness of the extent of your body, or say mindfulness of the bodily postures, regardless of what hindrance is there, so which means you're not acting out of hindrance and you're then maintaining the context despite the pressure of the hindrances. That's how you go beyond the hindrances. Which means sometimes it will be um, more pleasurable, sometimes it will be less depending on how many hindrances you have arising, how often. Mm. And that depends on you, really. How much you've been giving in to them before. Mm. But the less you act out of them, the less you give in to them, the less you try to get rid of them, the less you try to indulge them, the less they will arise, which means then your pleasure of jhana will be more and more agreeable. Uh, your practice of jhana will be more and more agreeable. And if you're, if you're, if you are acting out of the hindrance, you're basically the only way to act out of hindrance. I know what you. Yeah, the only way you act out of hindrance is to lose the extent of the body. Yeah, exactly. Because you're 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 putting yourself first. Yep. Oh, I I I can control. So if you catch yourself acting out of hindrance, it's yeah. not like oh, I, next time I won't do it. No, you will. Yes. What you want to do is when you catch yourself acting out of hindrance, now include all of that the body, yeah. in the extent of the body, and that's how next time you will not act as much, at least, yeah. out of the hindrance. <coughs> until it becomes possible to to, to realize actually it's not me who is yeah in control until the clarity is. it becomes apparent yeah oh hey wait a minute whether I, I attend to this or not it always remains bound with the body and it's fully understood and it cannot pertain to me mm -hmm. even if I wanted to mm -hmm. it was only by not understanding that it cannot pertain to me as into my mind to me to my point of view to my desires that's how it pertained to it mm -hmm. so develop yourself in regard to the body and sensuality cannot pertain to the mind anymore. <coughs>